Hi everybody, welcome to Sandra's Art Studio. Today I have a project in mind that hopefully a lot of you guys uh, will appreciate because maybe it's something that you need right now. And it's how to, you know, deal with stress and anxiety, right? Like, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, but I sometimes need to have something that engages me and it helps me cope with anxiety and stress. And the reason why uh, I've been a little too anxious and too stressed out is, well, I just got back from a trip, a long trip. And the other part is when I got back, it was raining a lot. And then we were hearing on the news how Milton was on its way, Hurricane Milton. So Hurricane Milton, I thought, well, no, I'm not going to watch the news. And so that shouldn't stress me out. But guess what? You get the news anyway through your husband, through your friends, um, through social media, if you use social media. So I got the news, yeah. I didn't have to look for it, I got it. And also, the city once in a while puts uh, put these alarms on your phone and you know if you have two or three phones and a couple of TVs in your house, you're hearing beep, 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 everything is just going beep, beep. And that is actually, that sound, even though you don't think it's stressing you out, that sound is meant to alert us, which that's what it is, right? It's okay if you can listen to that and then go on your business without being stressed or anxious, but usually that's not the case. Usually a lot of us don't know how to manage that stress and anxiety that we actually uh, been storing you know, with every event. So a lot of us are on what they call fight or flight mode and that actually raises your cortisol levels. And if your cortisol levels are high, your immune system goes down. And if that is happening, you also store fat, especially around your waistline, easier. Okay, so all of those things, it's just like, ah, oh, exhausting, <laughs> just thinking about it, right? Alrighty, so I've been doing projects, to, you know, over time, I've, I've known that, you know, whenever I get into a project, I actually kind of like get lost into that project and I like the feeling of that. A lot of times in the past, before I knew um, that these projects can help me relax, a lot of times I would wait to feel inspiration, right? To engage into a project. But once I started tattooing, I realized, you know, because when you have a client, they're waiting for you to tattoo, um, you can't wait for inspiration to come to you. You have to just get on the chair and do your tattoo. So that was good for me, it trained me to actually get on the project and do it instead of waiting for inspiration. And I've done projects um, to help me, that are very involved, you know, to help me calm down or to just get me in a happy place. And I'm going to show you, like in the past, I've done projects like this that are very engaging, very involved and each section I did, it just totally engulfed my mind, right? So when I got back from my trip, one of the things I did was look for a little project, you know, start a little project. And they can take, you know, a couple hours, they can take four hours. And I really like to do as much as I can do in one sitting, you know, hopefully finish it in one sitting. So here I have a mandala. I'm pretty sure you guys are very familiar with it. These are fun to do and they help cope with uh, stress and anxiety, you know, in a very weird way. So when I actually start one of these projects, I also want to be mindful and I want to do, you know, let's say do the pink and finish the pink section, do the purple, finish the purple section, do the teal, finish the teal section and on and on like that. Uh, it's not good if you're going to do this project and then you start moving from here to here to here you know, you don't want to do that because, you know, that actually keeps your mind on that scatter mode. Okay, so if you want to organize your mind a little bit, settle your mind a little bit, give your mind a little bit of a break, do it in that form where you're doing one color at a time, okay? And then I was, you know, since I was looking up like, uh, what is it that art really does for the brain? Because I know that that was my thing to calm down, to relax, to center myself. And then all of a sudden I ran into this, which is called Neurographic Art. And I love it. So this is 
new graphic art and you can make it in any shape you want to of course if you're very creative you know you can do anything with it like i did that project and i also did this tree of life project okay and it's very involved each one of those lines and connections they actually get your attention so i like the project and i figured you know maybe you guys want to do something like this with me and I did another project, and this is the one that you're going to see how I did step by step. Really simple and very meaningful too, because each one of these circles has a meaning and colors also have a meaning. So this is the project that I have in store for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. And let's watch the video and start with our supplies. Okay, let's get started with what we need. So I have some Canson. 98 pounds mixed media paper. I have some Prismacolor markers. I have some alcohol, watercolor uh, color pencils and watercolors and some water, a little tray for mixing. And that's pretty much it. Maybe some pencils if you think you want to practice first a little bit. And that's it. And here is a closer look at the type of paper that I'm using, which is a mixed media paper. So here I want to practice a little bit with a pencil. And basically this is how it goes. You, you do your lines, not the way your mind wants to do them, but you actually change it up a little bit. So you're keeping your mind kind of like more engaged this way instead of being on auto drive. Like, yeah, sure, I can go ahead and do a scribble across the page, but I want to have my mind totally engaged. So if my mind says, go to the right, then you don't want to go to the right or the left because the left is actually the opposite of the same thing. But you want to maybe go diagonally, um, up or down, something like that. So just keep changing it around. Don't get like your lines to look like a pattern, like all up and down or all in the same direction, you want to change it up quite a bit. So that is actually the key element of keeping your mind engaged. And if you need to practice a little bit, go ahead. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, then you are on the right path because that is what it's supposed to do. Make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Another thing you want to keep in mind is not to move your pad of paper in different directions to make it more comfortable for you to pull your line. So make sure your pad of paper is always in the same place. I have a couple of pieces of tape there because it helps me you know remember that this is where my pad goes and I don't want to unconsciously move it out of focus from the camera but maybe you're not recording this and you want to probably have that piece of tape there just to remind you where the pad is going because we do go on to this unconscious mode where we're doing things on auto auto drive and maybe you have a tendency of sliding your paper sliding your paper and then boom it's out of out of the place where it was supposed to be, out of the place that you had it initially. So keep your pad of paper in place and do all your lines that way. Now here you're seeing me do connections and basically the way these connections go is you want to round off each one of these intersections and fill them with color or the marker, in other words. So in essence, what we are drawing here, all these lines, all these wiggly lines, and we're rounding off all of these intersections all these crossing points when you look at a microscopic picture of your brain you're actually seeing something very similar on your paper this drawing this art form that we are doing is actually very similar to the way your brain neurons look what's fascinating about this type of art is that the connections that you are doing on your paper these lines and these rounded corners are not just happening on your paper, but they are also happening with your brain. They say that the neurons that fire together, wire together. So yes, that's what's going on on your paper and inside of your brain. I love this. And once you've practiced enough and you feel comfortable with the project, then go ahead and move on to doing this project on a clean piece of paper with your actual markers. Okay, here we're starting with the actual project. And I like my lines thin, so I'm going to start with a 03 Prismacolor permanent marker. 
if I want them a little thicker, I can always move up to the 0.5 or whatever. Um, as long as it's a marker that is not going to spread when I'm using my watercolors, right? So maybe you want to give it a little test before you play, unless you're planning on just using color pencils, which that that's fine too. So you want to go from one side of the paper to the whatever side, but always just go from, from the edges of your paper all the way from edge to edge and keep it unpredictable for your own mind because that's what's going to keep your attention. That's what's gonna keep your mind engaged in this project. Another thing you can do with this project is use your non-dominant hand. Mine would be the left hand. And I'm telling you, I am so uncomfortable at this point because I don't use my left hand for doing any art projects. My left hand is for holding something, but not for doing art projects. And if you engage into the rounding the connections, all your corners with your left hand, uh, I promise you're going to be very focused, very involved, very engaged into this project. Me, I gave it a little bit of a try and well, I do have a limited amount of time, but if you have lots of time in your hand, you know, go ahead and take on the challenge of doing all your connections with your left hand or your non-dominant hand, I should say, because some of you guys may be lefties. So that's all good. Um, but yeah, go ahead and try doing those connections with your non-dominant hand and see how you feel about it. I tried it and I felt very uncomfortable and I would definitely welcome the challenge if I had all the time in the world. And another thing talking about time is this is something that you want to do not with uh, pressure on time. You, you definitely want to take your time with this. Maybe the lines won't take a whole lot of time, but the connections will take a lot of time. And maybe at you know certain points you want to add another line because you feel like it would look a little bit more balanced and that is perfectly fine. And for the sake of time, I am speeding up this video. If you guys are anything like me, I want to get to the point and move on. And once you are done with all the rounding of the connections, you can add more or just leave it as it is. Of course, this is your project. But once I am happy with what I have, I got four colors, only four. I didn't want it to be any more than that, really. And you can make it to where they're contrasting or they're your favorite colors. Or maybe if you are into chakras, that they have a meaning based on the color of your chakra. So let's say like uh, the blues, the light blues are for the throat, that is for communication, but you don't have to pick it because it's a chakra color. Of course, you can pick it because it's your favorite color. I'm just saying, you know, whatever intention or whatever gives it more meaning, you know, go for it. These are also watercolors. So once I put all the colors the way I want them, then I will go ahead and take a wet paintbrush and go across it. This paper is not watercolor paper specifically, but it will handle a little bit of watercolor. Uh, it will wrinkle up a little bit. At the end of the project, I had to um, turn this whole pad upside down and put some weight on it just to de-wrinkle the paper a little bit. And you notice how I'm coloring across the page, and that is because we want to integrate all of these cells. If you start separating the cells, yeah, it will be a pretty, maybe like a stained glass effect, but it won't do what it's supposed to do to your brain which is integrate all of these connections, unite all of our thoughts, because this type of art speaks to the unconscious. This type of art is almost like hypnosis. So that's why you want to put intentions. Like, you know, remember when I was talking about before you even start this project, put some type of intention onto your project. You know, like, do you want to resolve something? Do you want to decompress? Do you want to manage your emotions better? What is it that you're doing this project for? So think about those things when you're actually doing this project and be mindful to stay on the project, to stay on the subject. So let's say my mind is wandering off. That's okay. Bring back the attention and the focus onto what is it that you have in hand? What is the project that you are doing right now? And yes, your mind is going to do it again. It's going to wander off and think about yesterday's activities and somebody said this to you and uh, somebody maybe looked at you the wrong way. Maybe a certain business uh, is not going the way you want it to go, but stop thinking, you know, just be mindful that what you are doing is trying to stay on the project in hand. You are trying to focus all of your attention onto this project. So we're not dragging it out. We're not making it to where it's going on forever and ever. Just whatever little bit of time that you are spending on this, it could be one hour, it could be three hours, whatever it is, your mind wonders, bring it right back onto your project. 
Don't let it wander off. And that's how it is with meditation too. You know, your mind is going to just wander and think about this, think about that. Sometimes we're thinking about things that happened 10 years ago. You know, that's ridiculous how our mind does that. And it's a shame that when we are having those situations, it's not really us who's controlling that situation. It's like the mind all of a sudden is controlling the situation. And that is kind of like having your secretary control every aspect of your life. Okay, maybe that could be the truth for some people, but, and I'm not trying to make a joke out of, out of it, but it's supposed to be the other way. Your mind is your secretary. You command your mind to do what it wants, what you want it to do for you. So if you want your mind to pay attention to the subject on hand, you're going to have to refocus onto the subject as many times as it takes. That, and that's okay. That's how meditation works too. You know, if you are wandering off, you, you put your attention back onto your breathing exercise. You pay attention to inhaling and exhaling. This here, you're paying attention to the colors. You know, it's, it seems like it's very mindless, this little project. It would be mindless if you allow your attention to go and drift other places. But you are going to be a lot more mindful about what is it that you're doing this project for. That's how come this project works almost like hypnosis. You see what I'm saying? I, I think it's fascinating. Now that I let my project dry after the watercolor application, I'm going to start with a thicker marker. I think it needs to be a little bit busier. So here I'm going with my 0.5 Prismacolor marker. And this time we're going to do a different technique, which is pushing this crystal right across the paper. And you can also do this with a coin or a button. I think it's kind of fun with this crystal. I love my crystals. I have them everywhere in the house. And so all you're doing is keeping the crystal from pushing onto the side and you want to push the crystal all the way to the other side of the paper. So wherever that line takes you. So you're not really in control of where the line is going to be because the act of pushing this crystal with your pen is actually going to create your line. So it's a fun way of doing it. Uh, you should give it a try and I think that what I already have is very thin and that should be good for the background and adding this uh, line, these lines that are going to be a little thicker, I think it's going to look good. And of course I am speeding up the video for time's sake. And once I have all of my lines, I'm happy with uh, my art, then I will do new connections again. As you watch the completion of this part of the project, I want to talk a little bit about what are the issues that you can address with this type of art. Well, there are many issues, you know, and some of the examples are not just anxiety and stress, but forgiving, uh, personal development, health, wealth, business, anger, you name it. So this is a fun project that you can do for yourself, for your own personal development, as I plan on doing this also for my own personal development. And if you guys are interested in knowing what is it that... Um, this did for me, let's say after a month or six months, would you please leave these on the comments and I will be more than happy to share. So back to this project. Now what we're going to do is address specific issues that we have in our lives. And I have three that I want to address for now. And why am I using circles? Well, circles are the representation of wholeness, infinity, unity, perfection, no beginning, no end, signifies eternity and interconnectivity. Spiritually, in many traditions, it symbolizes the cosmos, the universe, the divine, and self-connectedness. So yes, we're using the circle. So once we have the circle, we want to connect all the lines from our circle to our existing artwork. And we want to also put an intention on our circle and we want to either color code it or put a symbol or just write what is the intention that you have for this. Me personally, I don't like seeing words on my artwork. I think that uh, symbols work for me just fine. And in this case, I am going to put a money symbol because I've been having some issues about, you know, some of the projects that I have started and I haven't seen, like, I think that they're great ideas but I haven't seen the compensation, the level of compensation that should be um, matching to the effort that I put into certain projects. So I'm putting the money symbol and we'll see if that does some kind of results for me. And like I said, if you guys want me to share 
uh, in a month or six months from now, just let me know. I would be more than happy to do so. And my second circle, I'm going to put an M for marriage because I like to have some issues that we have created over 29 years of marriage resolved. In general, we do get along really good. He is still the love of my life. He is my best friend. But, you know, sometimes we get a little comfortable and we expect our partners to interpret what we really mean. And I guess that's an aspect that I really get annoyed with. And I know I have to be a little bit more patient. And he has to also change a few things. But I'm hoping that this uh, circle and this project in hand helps me with that little issue. So I'm thickening out the M for marriage and making all the connections necessary. And now I'm moving on to my third circle. And this one, I'm going to give it a C for communication. And I think that a lot of the issues are, it's not the marriage exactly, it's communication. And the big part of communication could also be listening, right? So sometimes we think it's lack of communication or could it be lack of the ability to listen? So all of those things, um, I actually, actually think about these a little bit more as I'm going. And I find it very interesting for that part. So now that I'm done with doing my symbols inside of my circles and giving it a intention to each one of my circles, I'm going to color code it and I'm going to give uh, my C a blue, that is for communication, my money symbol, I'm going to give it green and marriage, I'm going to give it red. So you color however you want to color your symbols, color code them or don't, you know, if you feel like you don't have to. But I feel that in the effort to connect everything together, it needs to be colored and it needs to connect with my background art and needs to connect with the lines that I already have. Everything needs to connect with everything. And that is that is just like it is in the brain. That is just like it is in our bodies. You know, is everything is connected to everything. And the connection of what we are doing on paper, we are also doing with our own minds. Okay. So that is the key for this exercise. What we do on our paper, we do with our minds. So when I color each one of my circles, I do want to go outside of the lines. And this is a representation of each one of my intentions to be spilling out onto the rest of my connecting lines, right? So these circles are containers, but they're spilling over into the rest of these connecting lines and that's pretty much it for this fun little project i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you got something out of it and of course leave it in the comments if you have any questions and if you want more videos like this thank you for watching and i hope you join me again next week and of course if you found this content useful please give me a thumbs up and subscribe you know how it works with youtube so that's all for now Bye.